Hi, my name is Dr. Craig Lowe. We're going to talk today about biomechanical disease, load-bearing biomechanics. 85-90% uh, of the population has a load-bearing problem in many afflicted potential joints. Most of these things uh, start from the foot and its interaction with the ground. One of the problems that we have in this world is we walk on man-made surfaces. These surfaces like concrete, asphalt, and tile are flat and zero-plane surfaces. And the foot's a mobile adapter. It's designed for mobile terrain. Grass, dirt, trails, and sand. It's not designed really for hard surfaces. So that in combination with acquired and congenital uh, conditions uh, alleviates and creates uh, a syndrome where people end up in acute and chronic pain over time. What we do in my profession as a functional biomechanist is that we analyze load-bearing mechanics. These cyclic load conditions are picked up using uh, digital imaging computers. This computer system that I developed uh, approximately 18, 20 years ago uh, is sort of a state-of-the-art three-dimensional load-bearing mechanical system. And I wanted to go through and kind of show you uh, what it is that we, we look at. So this is an example of a test. It's actually uh, my foot. And um, we basically fill out the patient information. We then uh, can look at a series of uh, load-bearing uh, mechanical studies that were done on this particular patient. I've, I've got a lot of studies in here. And in our case, we're just gonna review one in particular. So we're gonna pick out a particular study. We're gonna view it. Uh, this is a, a static exam, and what we do is we analyze the foot and limb in static non-movement because it works differently in that state of motion than it does in dynamic motion. Because when you're in movement, you've got acceleration, you have velocity, you've got a number of complicated forces that are affecting the foot and limb. We use computers to break those forces down, and so uh, this static view shows distribution of weight, 51% on the left limb, 49% on the right. It has targets. This, this target here is the center body mass for the left leg, uh, the center body mass for the body, the center body mass for the right leg. And then we look at balancing bubbles. Uh, this one here on the right is perfect. This one here on the left is a little bit proximal. And this bottom one looks at body sway. So if there's a, a leg shortage or anything like that, this, this will pick up. Uh, relative to the object itself, uh, we look at uh, the amount of pressure based on the surface area. Blue pressure is low pressure, peak pressure is red pressure, red being bad. In this particular study, we have moderate pressure on the left heel, right heel, and a third metatarsal head on both feet. We can put it into 3D and we can look at the uh, configuration of uh, pressure based on the total surface area of the foot. So that's static. And the next thing we look at is dynamics. So then we have the patient walk over the imager and we record the center of body mass affecting the foot. This is the center body mass going through my right foot and my left foot. Over here on the right is normal. And so we have the patient walk over the imager and we collect the amount where the center body mass is going through the foot as it's going through the complete gait cycle. We look at the, the right foot we look at the left foot and we analyze those bits of data and we put that into a configuration report. Uh, we can also take a look at the foot in three-dimensional view by rotating the object in a variety of different planes for viewing and we can watch the migration of mass through the foot as the patient's walking over the imaging system. Once we're done with that, then what we do is we um, uh, select the type of orthotic uh, that is going to be used. In our case, we're going to be looking at uh, a, a sport orthotic. So everything is based on shoes. So this is an orthotic for running shoes, uh, for tennis, for cleated sports, for golf, for uh, work boots, for Oxford shoes, for style shoes, and for diabetic shoes. In our case, we're going to <coughs> look at uh, sport orthotic for running. Uh, the physician will 
select the type of, sh of orthotic uh, thickness and uh, and then it pre-populates pre the right prescription based on the biomechanical studies. If the doctor wants to go through and alter, <coughs> excuse me, alter load, ah, okay. Okay, so this here is a modification screen that we can override uh, the uh, prescription order and the doctor can, can select uh, the type of uh, posting for rear foot control, the heel cup depth, uh, can also put in metatarsal pads, um, uh, heel cutouts, any type of special configuration can put it, be put into the particular order and it will show down here. If the doctor needs to talk to the patient, um, he can type in, in our case, we're going to be looking at a, a running shoe as a sport orthotic. Uh, we will pick the, the type of durometer. It comes either uh, We can pick the top cover that's gonna go on the top of the orthotic. Uh, and that's all that's really needed. The technician will take it from there. However, if, you, if the doctor wants to override the prescription order and, and add different kinds of accommodations, they can come into accommodation section and they can put in rear foot posting, heel cup depths of their choice, metatarsal pads, heel cutouts, whatever's needed. In addition, if the doctor wants to send a message to the technician, uh, they can type something in uh, that the uh, for the technician to pay attention to. Then they just accept the order, and then the order gets out and gets sent uh, to uh, the laboratory for production. And generally, everything that's made is done custom. Uh, it takes about two weeks to make the product. Uh, when the product comes in, then I basically let the patient know through a phone call and or texting that the orthotic is in. We have them come in, we dispense the orthotic, we trim the extensions. Um, the extensions being essentially the, the very end of the orthotic. So we will trim that to make sure it fits into the shoe properly. And then the orthotic is then dispensed. Uh, and we check them in usually three months unless they're diabetic or children, or they've got a specific uh, serious orthopedic condition that needs really close attention, then we will see them in a, on an earlier time frame. Once we uh, see them in their uh, three month normal checkup period, we do that as an orthotic calibration. We make sure that the orthotic is controlling joint alignment properly. We look at the load patterns on the foot with uh, the patient standing on the imager with the orthotic underneath their feet. And then we either adjust or we're happy with, it, with where it's uh, positioned. And then we uh, check them every two years the only exception to that would be children or diabetics where we need uh, to do it for either growth and or uh, neuropathies uh, that are changing more frequently in the load bearing uh, pattern of the foot uh, on the diabetic uh, insulin patient. The next thing that we look at after we've done the order and put the order through is uh, we have what we call an order status log and this tells us essentially where all the orders are in the laboratory and what in what uh, condition that they are. They're either pending, which means that they uh, have, haven't been uh, put through to the server yet, or they're placed or they're completed, and uh, or they're in progress. And so the doctor can check on the status of the orthotic production uh, directly from the lab technician as the orthotic goes into uh, production. Uh, uh, the other thing we have on our software is pending order queue. This has to do with orders that are sitting ready to go out uh, where uh, uh, the order is uh, in a holding pattern. And <clears throat> the orthotic orders can put also be put on hold. So let's say that you have a patient uh, that uh, has to check with insurance or didn't bring their, pot, their, their wallet, isn't paying for it. You can put the prescription order together, put it on hold. Once you receive the patient, you can unhold the product and it will go out to the laboratory. So we, this has been a process that we've done from its inception back in 
1997, and we modified the software to meet the demands of uh, the doctors over many years, and we've got it pretty well set up to where most most everybody's happy with the, with how the development of the software has gone, and uh, our goal is to provide the best custom product that we can uh, to the patient using computer technology. The more information that we have, the better the product can be and the more joints we can affect. So the other thing that we do besides orthotics is we have technology footwear that we use uh, that have specific characteristics. This particular shoe is called a kinetic shoe. It's made by Spira. It's got concentric, concentric coil technology that's designed to absorb 94% of reactive ground force. So when you're walking or standing on concrete, asphalt, and tile, uh, this shoe basically buffers the impact shock loading or cyclic load of the foot against the ground through these, co through these uh, concentric coils. Uh, so this is a type of shoe that we use with heel pain, metatarsal pain, and plantar fasciitis and load-bearing uh, syndromes that affect uh, the foot relative to chronic load. The next type of shoe that we use is called uh, Revere. These guys are out of Australia. Their footwear is all based around orthotics. And there's about 700 different styles of shoes. So what we do is we, we take their insole out and in its place, we put a custom orthotic that goes into the shoe in place of their insole. And so now we have a company that's got footwear built for orthotics.